Today I'm going to show you how you can make a foam cover to insulate your stingless beehive using a broccoli box. We'll start by discussing why you might or might not want a foam cover. Basically it's for insulation. So in winter it can keep a bit of the warmth in and in summer it can keep a bit of the heat out. Now ideally your hive will be made with thick walls or with thick timber and so the box itself provides a lot of the insulation. My own hives are made with 35 millimeter hardwood. They're pretty good by themselves, but I still like to have these covers on hand either for weak hives or for brand new colonies, or if I've got a hive in a particularly cold location. Um, I do have different sizes. I've got half covers, full covers, and just lids that you can use. And the lids are actually a very good thing in summer. You can have a hive out in, out in the sun and it's a little bit protected from that extra heat. Now there is the argument that having a cover on in winter um, could actually be detrimental because it stops the hive from warming up. But if you've got a hive that never sees the sun in winter, that's obviously a non-issue. You also have to consider that the met metabolic activity of the bees actually creates some heat. And so having the cover on in winter helps keep the heat that the bees themselves create inside the hive. A good hive design and correct hive placement are the best things you can do for your bees. But beyond that, a cover like these foam covers doesn't hurt. And being made out of a waste product, they're a bit more environmentally friendly than some of the other options out there. Though they don't look anywhere near as good, I have to admit. Start by removing the plastic tape and labels that probably come on the broccoli box. Actually, hang on, where do you get a broccoli box? Uh, if you go to your green grocer and you say, can I please have a broccoli box? They will likely give you one. Uh, some stores do charge a small fee for them. I paid 50 cents for these from my local green grocer and I don't begrudge them that fee. They have to take time out of their day to stack them, store them somewhere and then go and get them when you ask for them. So they do deserve compensation for saving these boxes and making sure they don't end up in landfill. You can glue the lid on using silicon or something else like that, but by far the easiest and what most of us have lying around is just common wood glue. Um, a better grade of wood glue will be more waterproof, but we are going to paint it later, so pretty much any wood glue will be fine. You do want a nice even spread, but don't go crazy about it. These are only covers and we are going to paint them, so it's not the end of the world if there's a small gap somewhere. But, you know, wood glue, just run your finger around it, good as gold. Once that dries, mark out how tall you want your cover to be. As you saw before, I use a number of sizes and I always get at least two covers out of a box. So if I, if I make a tall one out of a box, the other end will be one of those half covers you saw. But this of course depends on the height of your boxes. So I'm not gonna give dimensions, but you choose a dimension that works for you, then mark it all the way around the box. You can see here I've just used a speed square, but you can use a combination square, anything that can help you draw that line around the box. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. To cut the foam, I used to use a wood burning kit um, and I'd use the bladed attachment for the wood burning kit. Now a wood burning kit is essentially a soldering iron onto which you can attach different ends for burning into wood. And one of the attachments is a blade. It was quite good for cutting through foam, but I find it's even easier just to heat up a box knife and use that to cut through the foam. Now you will have to reheat it a few times as you're cutting through the boxes because the blade is very thin and cools down very quickly. But as a result of it being very thin and when you heat it up, it cuts a very neat line through the box. So that's how I prefer to do it nowadays. I will add the obligatory safety message. Burning foam does create some toxic byproducts, so do this in a very well ventilated area and at your own risk. Depending on the height of your hives and your covers, you might also want to cut openings for the entrances to your hives. If your hives have more than one entrance, remember to cut a hole for every entrance. Now 
the covers themselves are slightly too tight on my hive design so I gave the insides a tickle with the flame and that melts some of the polystyrene back particularly in the corners allowing it to slip much neat more neatly onto my hives. I finished them off with a coat of paint. Use water based or latex paints do not use anything solvent based or oil based. This does make them look slightly better, especially because the paint I use matches my hives, or most of my hives. Um, but the main reason for doing this is it makes the covers last much, much longer. Uh, so I've had broccoli box covers fall apart within a year when they're unpainted. The UV just gets to them. Um, but I've seen painted ones last almost 10 years. Um, so it's really good practice, well I think it is, to paint the covers. It'll, you'll just get much, much more life out of them. I usually do two coats just because I'm a bit a bit rough on my first coat. But if you took your time, you can probably get by with just one. The main objective is just to stop that UV light from destroying the boxes. Put them outside to dry, and once they're dry, they're ready to use. So that's how I make my foam covers for my stingless beehives, and a bit of the reason behind why I do it. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.